Hello everyone, um, my name is Sam, many of you will know me as Bursang Genno, and uh, I've, I'm the creator of Laddie, um, also Van, which is a conlang, but you know, it's slightly less relevant, and also some other stuff, program, I work for a company called Brace IT, this is not a project that's tied in with them though, you can also probably tell that I have my morning voice, because I'm doing this fairly early in the morning, um, and uh, here you can see the forum that Laddie has discussed on. And if we go here, you'll see when will an update be po posted, anything to show us what's going on. I'll try and get a small update out later today. This is said small update. Okay. Uh, right. It's a small update. What I'm doing is uh, I'm going to show you the entire code base. So you can see what goes into the, the back end and how it all ties into the front end. So uh, here we have the main bulk of the routing code. Now the routing code is essentially what means, uh, what, what it does is it means if I actually just boot this up. Uh, what is it on? I can't remember what I have my hotkey bound to. Shift F10. Okay, if I boot this up and load it up, we can bring this over. Okay, so notice how if I log in, uh, I want you to look at the URL. So at the moment we're on 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. If we log in, we get the same page. So that's routing. And you can see here we've got one route, the slash. Um, and if there is a user logged in, then we're giving them the introduction page. Uh, if they're logged in and they have no courses, so then they don't haven't made any courses and they're not using any courses, then we bring them straight to the course browser so people can get on a course or make a course if they've not done it yet. And uh, otherwise, we just show them this page here, which is the uh, home page, with user being whoever's logged in. Um, but you go here and you see how it says slash courses slash. Well, if you look here, slash courses slash. Uh, you want to say slash course slash UCID, well, let's, uh, I know that this has UCID 3, so let's just go there, uh, apparently not, oh, it's, uh, it's slash course, not slash courses, slash course slash 3, there we go, we're now on the laddie page, that's a locked thing, because I haven't said it, if we go to the edit page, edit course 3, this is where all of the routing happens, basically, is what I'm saying, so that was a uh, edit course UCID, this one here, so this is where all of the routing happen. But not only does the routing happen here, and the, the, the also this is also where the API is constructed. So everything you can do through the interface, you can technically do just by going to like slash API slash, and then a thing. So like slash API slash delete slash course, and then the course ID. Now if you don't own the course, so let me actually get the database up. Let's find a course that I don't own. And see what happens if I try and delete it. Because in theory, uh, it will just error. Um, now it's an error that won't be shown to the user, but yeah, so, uh, courses, okay, there's only one course up at the moment, let's, uh, quickly log in as a new, let's uh, make a new user, so Bob, uh, username is probably not long enough, uh, what's it say, must be at least six characters long, okay, uh, Bob, let's test, uh, account, okay, and we register, we log in with test account and password. Log in. Uh, this is all keyboard navigable, but yeah. Okay, so you see how, because we're not on a course, we can join one or we can make one. Well, let's quickly make one. I'm going to call it some dumb course. I'm just sort of showing off how some of the stuff works. So, here we go. There's nothing here. We could add stuff. We could edit stuff in. We could create lessons. We could add contributors. We're not going to do any of that. All we're going to do is log out and log back in as me. I show you the keyboard navigation there, uh, and if I pull up the database again, what we should see is that there's now something called uh, some dumb uh, some dumb course here. Yeah, some dumb course. So this is uh, owned by user three, but it has UCID six. So technically, if I go to slash API slash uh, course, I believe no, is it del uh, slash API slash delete slash course. Uh, and then it was ID6. 
notice how it just kept brought me back here. Now, in theory, that course should still exist. If that course doesn't exist, that's a bug I need to fix. Oh, yeah, and look, you see the course still exists here. So I was unable to delete it. If I put it in course 3, it would delete it. So, like, I've got this whole API that, I mean, you can only do stuff with if you've got the right access. Um, it's all a bit up here. There's one other thing, and that's, uh, if you notice how all of these end in a slash, um, that means if you go to slash courses without a slash, it will add the slash. And if you go to slash courses with a slash, it will just go there. There is one that doesn't, and that is slash version. What this basically means here is that if you go to slash version, you get this page which tells you the version. So here we're on pre-release version 2, which is a part of the Laddie 2 development set, which has version 0.2.x. If I add a slash here, it's not going to go anywhere. So like that's this is what all the routing does. So now each one of these API routes, because remember those are just the routes for the API, makes a call to an API function. So like this one here is to delete a key. So uh, if I go into one of the lessons I own um, here, you see how it has these keys. So this has one, two, three, four, five keys in it. So if I delete this, this is going to go to API slash lesson one, delete key 13. API lesson one, delete key 13. Anyway, and here it's going to call this API remove key. Um, now, if we go into the API, this is actually the code for the API. We can find remove key. Here we go. This is what the code does. And you'll notice that it creates, uh, it, it uses this thing called key.remove, where key, this key, is whatever key we pass in. And that key is built up in the model. So this can be a little bit hard to understand. Basically, the a this here controls all the routes. Then we have the API, which controls all of the doing things. Uh, and this is where errors are detected. So say for example, uh, let's go to the, the create account. Create, uh, no, what is it? Account user. Sorry, what did I call the make user one? Register, okay. So you see it will error if you've got less than six. Uh, if your username or password is less than six characters long, it's gonna error you out. And it'll set the correct appropriate error message for you. Or if you try and make a user with a username that already exists, that'll error you out as well. Um, so yeah, this is where error handling is done, but it's all done through the model. So here, if we see, we're going to try and create a username, or we're going to try and build a user, if user, where the username is the username that we've grabbed out of the form, so the, the register form, if they exist, but basically we've created this username object. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna set up a username a password we're gonna build a new user and then we're gonna register that user now this register function here happens in the model so if we go to the user model class user here we are here we're in the user model and we look they will have a register function and this will effectively add a user to the database so all of the database stuff happens in the model because that's effectively where each part is is modeled as it were each bit of the database is converted into a model that the code can use the api is where all of the uh, error detection is done and the routing, which is called init, is where all of the routes are planned out and how you can navigate. So that's all there is to it, right? Wrong. This is just the back-end code. So the front-end is powered by a thing called Materialize CSS, which is a godsend because everyone knows I am shit at interface design. This is Materialize CSS. It, it's a CSS framework that lets you do many, many useful things and makes my life orders of magnitudes times easier anyway um, but on top of that you also have this thing called the ginger so uh, let's pick a page where quite a bit of ginger happens let's uh, go to what should we go to let's go into there's a bit of ginger here there's a lot of ginger here okay so this page here is edit lesson one now if we actually go to slash edit slash lesson slash ulid here we are You'll see how it calls uh, if if it if you're allowed to be here essentially. Um, so if you're not logged in, it'll bring you home, and if uh, you're you don't own the course or you're not a contributor to the course, it'll bring you home. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna build the page for edit lesson .html. So let's go to that edit lesson .html. It's here. So this looks like regular HTML, right? But it's got these things in it. So these are ginger. So let's go to the first bit of ginger right here. H3, course title, lesson title, course title, lesson title. Let's go down a bit. Error. If there are any errors, which there aren't at the moment, let's make an error. What's the easiest way for me to make an error? 
I genuinely don't know. There's, it's fairly difficult to cause errors to happen. If there was an error, it would appear in a red box there. Um, and then we have all of the links. So back here, back to the course editor, that links to a specific course. So that's a piece of ginger that basically says we need to go to this page with this link. Um, if we go down to the, the keys, for key in lesson.keys, if it's not the last one, we do end ifs and we basically we kick out all of these keys. This is all powered by what's called the Ginger 2 templating engine, which is at Ginger 2.poku, something like that. Is it Ginger.poku? Ginger.poku.org. That is where Ginger 2 exists. My dog is barking because the washing machine is on and he's a wimp. So, yeah, this is what Ginger is, and that's the whole front end power. There is a ridiculous number of lines of code, but that's not all. <laughs> That's really not all, because on top of what existed from Materialize, I had to build a ton of CSS up. And on top of what existed from the Materialize JS, I also have this whole thing here, which is effectively the back-end JavaScript for Laddie. This does not much, like, fancy stuff. Mostly, it just, like, gives me a bit more freedom with the design. <coughs> and you'll see some stuff with background images happening here. I don't even know what this is doing at this point, to be honest. Oh, that's for the lesson percentages, fair enough. So that, that's how you can see how far you are for a lesson, which I haven't shown you. But yeah, so this is the interface, and really I've just used this as an example to take you through the back end, so you're sort of adding keys and stuff here. Um, how it all works in the front end, I mean, you'll see that all when I release tutorials, but really what this was about is showing you the amount of work that has to go into a single feature. Like, a feature that's actually missing at the moment that I'm currently coding is, is you notice these buttons here, the delete buttons, if I click one, we get an error because it doesn't do anything and the key's still there. That's because I haven't written the root for that yet. So I go down to the root. Uh, it's not an API root because the API root's a limited root anyway. Uh, actually, it is an API root, which is fine because it means I don't have to restrict it. But here, yeah, it, it just passed. It doesn't do shit. I could have it return, hello, YouTube. Let's do that. Now, whenever I click on one of these links, it's just going to say, hello, YouTube. It's not actually going to do anything useful, but, I mean, hello, YouTube. So, that's what I'm coding next. Um, and that's just so people can, if they add a limit by mistake, get rid of it. Um, yeah, this is a big project. I mean, lines of code, it's ridiculous. Like, 300 lines of code. Uh... Like, just in the core stuff, like, none of the web front ends or anything, just the back end. That's, like, three, uh, 260. This is 270, so that's, like, 600 on my own. This is 410. So that's, like, that's over a 1,000 lines of code just, like, built up on my own over time. But then you've got all of the web stuff and all the front end and all the CSS and the JavaScript. I think the whole thing comes out as a little bit over 2,000 lines of code, 2,500-ish. It's a big project, and you guys only ever see, like, a tiny bit of it, so I'm, I'm hoping to sort of... I mean, what you see is when I give screenshots of this front end, so, like, I might show, here's what the course page looks like. You can search for a course, like, I don't know, what did I call that other course I added? It was some dumb course. Oh, yeah, notice how it's not here, because it has no learners. Only courses that people are actually learning will show up in this course browser. But, yeah, let's find it. There you go, some dumb course. We have to search for it, because it doesn't have any learners. But yeah, it's there. We can search for course as well if we wanted to find it. Because I'm a good programmer. D, B, spacey. Any string that's in this, I think, will turn it up. Is it case sensitive? It's not even case sensitive. I'm a much better programmer than I expect of myself. Anyway. All you guys see is stuff like that. Like me showing off the front end. Showing off like some text boxes. Like some interface design. Making lessons. Going into a lesson and adding questions like, oh, you want to add an audio entry? Well, you better give it a transcription and the audio you want to give it. But yeah, like you guys see stuff like that. You don't see any of this huge back end that's built up over time and is really where the hard work goes. So I'm hoping to sort of maybe give you guys an appreciation of how much goes into those few screenshots I actually show you. Like this here. Just getting that to work, the front end for this bit to work, was like an hour of my life. Because it may seem fairly simple. I mean, it's put that there, it's put that there. But everything has to link properly. It has to have good detection. So if you don't own the course, it's going to kick you out. If you're trying to brute force it, it's going to kick you out. Uh, if you're trying to do SQL injections, it's going to kick you out. It's got so much stuff that has to go into just every single page. Um, 
that's why, like, I did here, I did some future design ideas, because CodePen fixed its shit, it has, yeah. Um, Code.jQuery went down yesterday, which means, like, half the websites on the internet broke, and this was one of them. So, like, doing some future design ideas that I did here, just to see, like, how things could look in MRV2. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, like, this. I'm going to explain the, the versioning quickly as well, because I will refer to it, and it's kind of important you learn it. PRV2, anything that starts PRV is a pre-release version. This means this is development stuff done before I release anything. This can also stand for post-release 2, which is anything after I have an initial release. So I'll affect, uh, but these are all development build. Then there is MRV, which are the major release versions. So MRV1 will be the first thing released, and it will be based on PRV2, probably. Um... That's the rough outline of the versioning scheme. And then there's um, MRC, which is the major release candidate. And that is essentially, this is a finalized version that I'm just bug testing. And if there's any bugs that show up, I have to fix them right now. Because I was assuming it was a bugless version. So that's like an explanation of the versioning scheme I'm using. You can always find out what version it is. Because uh, if I ever do like a video tutorial or something, I'll start by saying, this is done for PRC 2.5 or some nonsense like that and so you can just go to slash version and see if your version's changed and like whether or not the tutorial is still going to be relevant to you that's pretty much everything i wanted to talk about so i'm gonna like pack it up uh thank you very much for watching and um yeah hopefully you'll see some more work done on this as time goes on and i can get a release at some point at some time <laughs> yeah all right bye